This is Andrew McLennan. Recently, Australian Federal Government broke from a long-standing tradition that we stood with Israel, and they voted in the United Nations to recognise Palestine. There's a group in Australia called the Indigenous Friends of Israel, and I'm joined by their founders and their leaders now to discuss this change in direction by the Australian Government. Norman and Barbara Miller, welcome. Good afternoon, Andrew, and uh, good to be uh, on Vision Christian Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you both. So tell me initially, what was your reaction when you saw what the Australian Federal Government had decided to do in relation to recognising Palestine? Andrew, what I'd like to do first is to uh, bring in a scripture, if that's all right. It's a very short scripture in Psalm 76. Why I'm saying that, I think it's important, and I'll come to that. In Psalm 76, it says, God is renowned in Judah. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shields, and the swords, the weapons of war. As you mentioned, um, Andrew, in, in the opening, how our government over many, many years have has uh, had that tradition Unfortunately, you know, there's things that we um, have, uh, traditions that we carry out personally um, in our own lives, but as, as a government of our nation, it's, it's unfortunately that tradition has been broken and um, no one likes to see uh, things that are, I believe, biblically and, and um, foundationally uh, should be, um, you know, should be kept because as a Judeo-Christian nation, I think that's important. And uh, the importance of being a nation that has the plumb line of the Lord. And, uh, you know, and that's, we know that uh, the justice and righteousness is the foundations of God's throne. Love and faithfulness goes before him. So it, on the, I read that scripture, Andrew, because 76 um, years today, is the um, the anniversary of Israel as a as a as a nation celebrating its 76th year, and uh, that's even that's right now today. And you think of of uh, people right around the world, history, and uh, I remember quite a few years back, Andrew, when Vanuatu over nations every time, and I no doubt they'd have this big slice of cake uh, celebrating Israel and Israel's birthday. And no doubt, I, 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 I say the same thing, happy, singing happy birthday to Israel for his 76th um, birthday. But in saying that, there's a slice of history. Um, you know, we, we all like to have that uh, nice a slice of that cake, but the slice of history has been, it's, it's not good, uh, has left a good taste in our mouth because of what the Australian government and their, their actions have taken on this stand of, of voting um, for the Palestinians uh, in the, the UN vote. And there are other nations, um, but notably Australian is, Australia has been one of those nations uh, also. I, I really stand strong and encourage Papua New Guinea, the Micronesian, Melanesian and Polynesian nations that have stood uh, strong and giving, given their voice for um, not only celebrating Israel's birthday, which many of them would be, but uh, it's left a sad taste, uh, you know, a taste in our mouth, in, in my stomach, that how Australia's gone this way. Yeah, it, it's interesting, Norm, because Australia was actually the first country in 1947 to vote in favour of the UN partition resolution, which led to the creation of Israel as a nation state. So Australia was the first country to vote in favour of this UN petition resolution which created the modern state of Israel and here we are in 2024 and it seems doesn't it that this Albanese government is going in a different direction to that yeah absolutely and Australia also was the first nation in 1949 in May um, to accept Israel as a nation state with uh, Doc Evatt um, been presiding over that at the United Nations. So we do have uh, a history of standing with Israel and um, even um, Bob Hawke um, has said uh, a 
famous uh, previous Labor Prime Minister that uh, if Israel goes down, we all go down in the West with it because um, basically um, Israel is upholding um, the, the values upon which the West has been built. It's the only democratic nation um, in the Middle East. In the Middle East, mm. yep. Yeah, and absolutely. And what sort of a message do you think, Barbara, this sends off? If we are recognising Palestine, which is not a democracy, which does not hold to our values, what sort of a message do you think Australia is sending to the world? We're sending a message that we're rewarding the terrorism, barbarism, um, rape, mutilation and torture that Hamas and some Palestinian citizens as well are uh, committed on October 7. Uh, we're rewarding war crimes of killing civilians on October 7. We're rewarding war crimes of um, taking hostages and we're rewarding war crimes of Hamas um, putting, using its uh, people as um, human shields to win the propaganda war against Israel, which has been very effective. And I'm really concerned that uh, I, I said a few weeks ago, the Lord revealed to me that Australia was aligning itself with the Psalm 83 nations. Well. I'm afraid with this vote at the UN, we are now aligning them ourselves with the Gog and Magog nations because we voted with Russia, uh, China, uh, North Korea, all communist nations, and we voted with Iran um, and uh, Turkey and Northern Africa, radical Islamic nations, all we want to destroy um, Israel. And so that is where Australia has aligned itself. So uh, I'm very concerned that Australia will one day be judged as a goat nation rather than a sheep nation as it talks about in Matthew 25. Yeah, and, and there's some numbers too. So there's 100,000 Australian citizens who are Jewish. There's a million Australians now who are Muslim. Do you think Albanese and Wong are more focused on domestic politics, i.e. getting the votes of the Muslims of Australia than they are really concerned about the plight of the Palestinian people? Yes, I, I believe I believe that's where it is. And it's, it's like you said, Andrew, it's that political um, motives that they have. And, you know, there, there are motives that... Um, there are good motives, but there's also wrong motives. And I think this, this government, um, in its heart, has wrong motives. And, you know, it's, it's, it's astounding. And, you know, you shake your head and you're just so troubled by how can evil be so rewarded when, when they made this vote? That's, they they uh, would have known what they were um, voting for and what the repercussions. And it has uh, not only, you know, they say in, in that scripture there, Andrew, a house divided against itself uh, cannot stand. And so we are, we are starting to see... Um, not only our nation of Australia of so much fractured, but right around right around the world, that there is such a uh, a fracturing um, of 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 people and, and and nations and and yes, that that's right. When you think of of um, you know when I think of Holocaust survivors, importantly, Sydney and Melbourne is is one of the biggest populations of of Holocaust survivors, and uh, you know they stand strong. And you think the stories. We have been around Holocaust survivors uh, and children of Holocaust um, survivors. When they tell you the story, the stories are just, uh, Andrew, they're, they're chilling in itself. And for them to see what's happening again, like it's, it's the rise of uh, in the level of anti-Semitism. And, and you think, uh, Australia, Andrew, we love this nation. Like you and, and many other um, uh, Australians, we love this nation. But to see this nation, uh, the way that it's going, and the and and, and the government that's that's taken uh, us down this track, you know, they, I, there should have been more response to um, what's what's really um, the uprising of, of many things. We can see that, and I, I it gets down to uh, Andrew. I shared a, a message uh, a few weeks back, and what was what Hamas, Hamas did, you know, Hamas means violence, 
that's 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 the word that's the word that's attached to it and when you look at scriptural bible scripture you can when you see the word violence will you attach it to to hamas and uh what we're what we are seeing is as i said when barbara shared that the lord gave her that message was psalms 83 spiritually where we as a nation are spiritually aligned with that that scripture of psalms 83 with the other nations and so it's 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 something that is is very uh, you know it's very alarming and you you think that we will be judged when god when jesus comes back he says hey the sheep on the right and and just yeah the sheep on the right and the goats on the left so andrew the, one of the things that we're seeing is we're seeing a, a goat government leading us down it's like um wolves and sheep's clothing you, can you say wolves in sheep's clothing or, or do you now say wolves in, in goat's clothing? Because that's what this left field is taking us down and we need as Christians to be hearing what the voice of the Lord. But you think of so many Jewish people in our nation, even a very small remnant of where we are, there's the fear. There's, there's so much fear that's, that's, that's in um, not only in Jewish homes but also in schools because nothing is uh, there are a lot of people and i thank god for for many people that are making that that are making their voice loud and and heard and sometimes they don't get the opportunities but it's uh ministries like yourself andrew uh vision christian ministries that has been such a blessing and i i thank the lord for a ministry like yourself and listeners that you have that when we are hearing and taking on not only as we're going to the prayer and and uh, heating up their prayer rooms I think that's important, but also to be, there's a time, time for silence, but it's a time to speak. And I believe that the Lord is, is allowing us. He's allowing, as you've given us the opportunity to speak on what's um, the things that's concerning us personally, but also as a nation. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to thank you both so much for sharing with us today. And just quickly, Barbara, for some of our listeners who don't know about the Indigenous Friends of Israel, can you give us a very brief summary of who the Indigenous Friends of Israel are and what you do? Well, basically, it's mostly Indigenous uh, people around Australia and mostly Christians. Um, we also, actually, surprisingly enough, we have some Jewish people who are Indigenous as well, um, who we work with, but also um, we have people through the uh, Pacific and through Asia who are Indigenous as well and stand with us to support um, Israel, so that has been such a blessing. And uh, we actually, our, our ministry, the Centre for International Reconciliation and Peace, um, we started back in 1996, and we've always been pro-Israel, but we specifically set up Indigenous Friends of Israel in 2017, um, when what's happening now with the Labour Party um, Bob Carr was pushing all this right back there then and we saw the writing on the wall and uh, that's why the Lord had us to set up Indigenous Friends of Israel then. Well, once again, I want to thank you both so much for your time, Norman and Barbara Miller from the Indigenous Friends of Israel with your response to Australia's recent vote at the UN Re-Israel uh, so Norman and Barbara Miller, thank you so much for joining us on 2020 today. Thank you, thank Andrew. You, Andrew. God, God bless, bless you. you.